Welcome to Mathematic. We are busy revising statistics for paper 2 for grade 12 mathematics. And in this video, we will focus on outliers. Now, in order to discuss outliers, we will make use of the following example with our 15 data points. So, this is called a set of numbers, and we have 15 values that we will consider. And we'll try to identify which of these values do not fit the pattern of the rest of the data. Now, before we do that, let us discuss what we have right here. So this is an interval. On the left side of our interval, we have the lower fence. And on the right side, we have the upper fence. And you would notice we have the symbols of Q1 and Q3. So in our first video on ungrouped data, we discussed how to find Q1 and Q3. So Q1 is also known as the lower quartile, and Q3 is also known as the upper quartile. Another part that might look familiar to you is the IQR. Now remember, the IQR stands for the interquartile range. That is the difference between quartile 3, or the upper quartile, and the lower quartile. Let us jump into our example. The first question that we have here is draw a box and whisker diagram. Now we have learned how to do this in our first video, but we will need it later when we discuss the outliers. So a quick revision for the box and whisker diagram. We need the minimum value, which is 14, and the maximum value, which is 17. And we indicate those values on a number line. Next, we need to identify the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the median. Now, you can either do this with your calculator, or you can do it manually. For the median, or quartile 2, we need to find the middlemost value of this data set. So, we have 15 data points. So, the middle of that is 7.5, or we can say the 8th position. So 15.6 would be our quartile 2 or our median. And what I want you to notice is that the data was already arranged in ascending order. And if we take the median to the right of that, we have 7 values. And to the left of that, we have 7 values. So this is the exact middle. For quartile 1, we take the median again, but only for the lower half of the data. So here we have seven values. And the lower half of the data is 15.4. So that is quartile one. The same goes for the upper quartile. Or quartile three. We take the middle value of the upper half of the data points. And notice for quartile one, and for quartile 3, I ignored the median's value. So I only found the quartile or the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. And quartile 1, 2, and 3 forms the values that we use within our box, in our box and whisker diagram. Now that we have that, we can move on to the second question that says determine the outliers. Now, for the outliers, we need three things. We need quartile 1, quartile 3, and the IQR. Now, quartile 1, we already identified as 15.4, and quartile 3 as 15.9. Now, remember, the IQR is the difference between quartile 3 and quartile 1. And that difference is 0 0.5 on this example. Once we have that, we can work out the lower fence and the upper fence. So for the lower fence of the outliers, we'll take quartile 1, and we subtract 1.5 times the IQR. Now this 1.5 is a standard value that we use to identify an outlier. You do not need to calculate this value, it's simply part of our formula for the lower fence. So 
quartile 1 is 15.4 minus 1.5 times the IQR, which is 0 0.5. And that value is 14.65. What I want you to notice is this 14.65 is not on our data set. It's an estimated value for the lower fence. So where our cutoff point would be for the outlier. Now we repeat that calculation for the upper fence, but instead of using quartile 1, we will use quartile 3. And we are adding now 1.5 times the IQR. So we have quartile 3 is 15.9 plus 1.5 times 0 0.5, and that is 16.65. Again, the 16.65 is not part of our data. It's a simple estimate where we will cut off values. So any values outside of this interval is considered an outlier. See, if I go to the data quickly, that 14.65 would be here between 14 and 15.1. And the 16.65 would be there um, before 16.9. So can you see on the outside of that, we have 14 and 16.9 and 17. So those three values are considered outliers. So they do not form or fall into the pattern of the rest of the data points. Next up, we would draw a box and whisker diagram plotting the outliers. So we will show the outliers. So it's the same as our first box and whisker diagram. But now we will consider the lower fence and the upper fence. So let's go through this quickly. So when I draw this box and whisker diagram, I'll start by plotting or finding the lower fence from our outlier calculation and the upper fence from our outlier calculation. Next, I show the values that we reject with open dots. Now, this lower value is not the minimum value. Remember, the minimum of the data is still 14. What we're doing with outliers is we're simply identifying them. So if I have my data set, 14 is rejected, then the next lower value is 15.1. And at the upper two values, I rejected the 16.9 and 17. Then the next higher value is 16.1. So that is what's happening here. The lower value here is 15.1. That's the next value after the minimum. And the next highest value after those two which are rejected is 16.1. And the important part when we plot this box and whisker diagram is that we do not make changes to this box right here. So the quartile 1, 2, and 3 is the same as quartile 1, 2, and 3 that we have identified in the original set of data. So all that we have done is we have identified the 14 and 16.9 and 17 as our outliers. But these values are not rejected. They are still part of the data. And the last question is, discuss the effect of the outliers on the mean, median, and standard deviation. So in our first video, we learned how to find the mean, the median, and we also have learned how to find the standard deviation using our calculators. And for this question, we will work out when it's included and excluded. So when I have all the data points, that's with the 14 and the upper two values, I have 15 data points in total. So the mean is all the values added together, divided by 15, and that is 15.7. But for the mean with the outliers excluded, that means I would take out the 14 and 16.9 and 17. Notice now I only have 12 values instead of 15 because I leave out those three values. And my total is also smaller because I do not add them up. And can you see the mean is slightly lower now. For the standard deviation, using all 15 values, we have 0 0.7. And the standard deviation, using the 12 values that remain, we have 0 0.3. So that shows you the impact of an outlier. 
the outliers create a higher deviation, where if you are remove or ignore the outliers, the standard deviation is lower. And the median will also change slightly. So let me show you on our data set what happens to the median. So if I reject the 14, and if I reject the 16.9 and 17, now I only have 12 values. And the middle of those 12 values is actually between 15.5 and 15.6. That'll be our quartile 2. If you notice, that value in between 15.5 and 15.6 don't exist. So we say 15.5 plus 15.6 divided by 2. And that is in between here. So that is 15.55. So this value is also not part of our data set, but we estimate what we think the median would be if the outliers are excluded. And that is our quick revision on outliers. Thank you for watching. Remember to show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to Mathematic.